Hey, before we start our smashing adventure, I first want to talk about today's awesome sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you don't know, a VPN is a virtual private network, basically a service that encrypts your internet data and gives you extra security against ad companies and protects you against hackers. It not only works on your computer, but on your phone and all kinds of other devices you have. Simply open the program, tap the big button, and bam, you're connected. Simple as that. You can even customize the location you appear in. I'll choose Canada, the home country of maple syrup. Perfect for waffles. And bam, it's that easy. I've actually had my channel and other private accounts hacked, and with ExpressVPN, I never have to worry about that ever again. It's also less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash Connor the Waffle. And now, back to the nonsense. There's a ton of different characters in the Smash Bros series. Some that are Nintendo icons, others that got a well-needed revival, total shockers to the series, characters that made me fall in love, whatever the piranha plant is. But today we're going to be talking about a different type of character. The characters that for one reason or another, never saw the light of day. Yup, I'm of course talking about cancelled or unused characters that Father Sakurai himself struck down with a ferocity so strong it made Geno fans all around the world weep a single tear. That's not me though, I'm... I'm okay. There's still hope, right? Gah! Compose yourself! So yeah, let's check out some cancelled and unused characters throughout Smash Bros. history. Starting our journey with the original Super Smash Bros on the N64, there actually weren't too many cut characters. Bowser and King Dedede were both being worked on for about half of the development of the game, but were then eventually scrapped for unknown reasons, until making their debut in Melee and Brawl respectively. Marth is another character who was considered to join the initial roster, to add another sword-wielding character, but due to limited development time, there just wasn't enough time to add him in. Mewtwo was also planned, but never got farther than the Sakurai sitting at home eating dinner thinking, yeah, I should put Mewtwo in Smash phase. Yeah, I mean, hey, it was the 90s. Pokemon Mania was running wild, brother! So, the more Pokemon, the merrier. And that's about it when it comes to the OG Smash Bros. All in all, I'd say it was a pretty smooth process in terms of the character roster. Sure, there were a few that had to get scrapped for one reason or another, but they all found their way in eventually. You see? Good things come to those who wait. Remember that, Waluigi fans. But now we've reached Super Smash Bros. Melee, where things get a little more interesting. Some more cancelled characters that would eventually find their way into the series included Wario, Sonic, Lucas, and Snake. Lucas was actually meant to straight up replace Ness as the Mother series representative in the game. However, due to Mother 3 being in quote unquote development hell, Ness was brought back instead. Wario was also planned, but get this Sakurai was afraid of overrepresentation of a series, meaning too many characters from a single game series. He's obviously had a change of heart now, considering there's 86 million Fire Emblem characters in Smash! Of course you remember! Mark Roy from Mike Robin! Right, and I get it! There was also a famous rumor that James Bond from GoldenEye 007 was planned to be a character in the game. How weird is that? Sure, GoldenEye was one of the most beloved first-person shooters on the console, and a game that I still go back to to this day, but... How out of place would that look? James Bond in Melee? This British spy who shoots a gun and sleeps with multiple women battling it out with the likes of Mario and Pikachu? What would James Bond even do in the game? Slap people around and then pull out an AK-47? That sounds amazing, actually. However, James Bond's inclusion was nothing more than a rumor. Sakurai never stated that James Bond would be in the game. What, no small talk? No chit-chat? The Ice Climbers were added in as a retro throwback character. However, some other characters that were considered for that spot included Balloon Fighter, Urban Champion, Bubbles from Clue Clue Land, and even Excite Bike. Yeah, could you imagine a character always being on a motorcycle? I'm sure that wouldn't get annoying at all! Oh my god! Ayumi Tachibana. Does that name ring a bell? 
Probably not, which is exactly why she didn't make the final cut. It's been confirmed that Ayumi Tachibana from the Famicom Tantai Club series was considered to be in Melee. The game was released on the Famicom Disk System and was an adventure game where you would need to solve the mysterious murder that has taken place in your high school. Yeah, perfect for this colorful Nintendo crossover game. James Bond isn't looking too out of place now. Sakurai stated that she wasn't included in the game simply because not a lot of people would most likely know who she was, considering the game was never released outside of Japan. The last character we'll be talking about for Melee is Mock Rider! <laughs> During an interview, a fan asked Sakurai who he would personally like to see in Melee. His response? Mock Rider! This was, however, most likely a joke, as he said he wanted to include him based on his funny name. That's right, Sakurai was the original troll. Yeah, before you all started talking about wanting Shrek and Goku and Smash, Sakurai was ahead of the game. When asked about Banjo and Kazooie being in Melee, all Sakurai said was, Yeah, this video was made before the announcement, but we're still gonna talk about it because it's an interesting piece of history. Due to adult reasons, it would be unlikely. This most likely refers to copyright issues due to Rare being bought out by Microsoft. So, in the words of Banjo himself... <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Brawl, a game that a lot of people really didn't like. But I did. I'll always stand up for you, Brawl. This was the first Smash game to start cutting characters that were in previous entries, including Roy, Mewtwo, and Dr. Mario, just to name a few. But the most interesting cut character was Dixie Kong! Making her debut in Donkey Kong Country 2, Dixie quickly became one of the most beloved Kongs in the Kong family. With her sassy bubblegum blowing self, she would use her hair as propellers, nice! She actually had a working prototype at one point, and was initially envisioned to have a tag team mechanic with Diddy, similar to the gameplay in the Donkey Kong Country series. However, due to complications, she was eventually scrapped, and Diddy instead made his debut as a full character. Villager and Mii Fighter were also planned, but Sakurai felt like they weren't meant to be fighting game characters. I'd say Mii Fighters would have been the best choice. I mean, come on, creating a Mii was one of the most fun things to do when we first got our Wiis. Taking control of them in Wii Sports and Wii Play was so cute and charming, so also being able to play as them in Smash Bros would have been the icing on the cake for this console. Alright, time for some Pokemon, because hey, everyone loves taking control of cute little creatures and causing absolute brutality! Blastoise was originally meant to be a part of Pokemon Trainer's team, but was later swapped out for Squirtle in favor of having Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard to represent the three stages of evolution in Pokemon. That makes sense, but I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't love to play as this absolute unit! Blastoise! After Brawl's release, there were some files found in the game titled Pra and Mai, which led many people to believe that Plusle and Minin were planned to be in the game, due to the fact that Pra was the first syllable of Plusle's Japanese name, and Mai was the first syllable of Minin's Japanese name. It's still unknown, however, if that's what the file name was implying. Hey, remember Gino? I do. I'll never forget. Super Mario RPG was one of the most creative, charming, and beloved RPGs on the Super Nintendo. It did the unthinkable, turning this into a turn-based RPG. Like I said though, it worked amazingly well and introduced a new cast of lovable characters. One of which being Gino, a warrior sent by a higher power to assist Mario in the battle against evil. Gino was considered for Brawl due to his high popularity with the fanbase. Heck, even Sakurai himself thought Gino would be a cool addition, with his arm cannon making him a unique character. However, it's completely unknown as to why he was cut from the game, and Sakurai has never elaborated on the reason. That's not good enough! I need answers! My heart weeps at this mystery! Smash for Wii U and 3DS 
not too much going on here in terms of unused characters, most famously being cut were the Ice Climbers. Sakurai stated that he and the development team were having issues programming the duo to work properly on the 3DS, so instead of just having them be Wii U exclusive characters, they were cut entirely. Krom was also considered to be in the game, but the team ultimately decided against having another blue-haired swordsman in the game, being replaced with Robin. But fear not, Krom fans! Krom, on my mark. See? He's totally in the game. Takumaru from the mysterious Murasame Castle and Heihachi from Tekken were more considered characters, but ultimately were turned into assist trophies and Mii costumes respectively. Same with Krom, also being turned into a Mii costume. Don't toy with my heart like this. What's next? You're gonna take my boy Lloyd Irving and turn him into a me cost- Alright, let's go! None of you will ever truly understand my pain. And finally, we've reached the most recent installment in the series, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and... Well, everyone is here! Almost everyone. Alucard from Castlevania Symphony of the Night was considered to be a playable character, considering that Symphony of the Night was one of the most popular Castlevania games, despite not being on a Nintendo console. But Sakurai wanted a Belmont to be playable instead, which makes sense. Smash Bros. is a celebration of iconic video game mascots, and with no Simon, there'd be no Castlevania Legacy. Probably, I don't know. And instead, Alucard got the unfortunate fate of becoming an assist trophy. And those were pretty much the characters that were cut, considered, or just simply unused throughout Smash Bros. history. Which of these would you have loved to see make the final cut? And why is the correct answer Gino? Or not me, Lloyd. Where is the justice? Where do you get off? Don't even start spewing the word justice. I hate that word. Sorry. Sorry.